What's up, Ten Skill Squad? It's been a little while since we had anything from the old Banggood on the channel. But when I saw this scale as sh Land Rover, Range Rover, I was like, yeah, that looks pretty good. And then when I saw that it was 65 bucks, I was like, ah, it might be toy grade. But looking at the box, there's a lot of big headlines here that would make you believe that this is probably, maybe, pretty legit. Especially the part about let more people like playing models. I like playing models. And I think more people should like playing models. So let's open this thing up and see just how good or how bad you can crawl for 66 doll hairs. That's not a lot of doll hairs. So this actually arrived pretty quick. It took maybe a week for this thing uh, from the time the order was placed to it showing up. There's lots of cardboard in here. Let's take a look at this. This has got to be the transmitter. And judging by the box, the transmitter looks actually pretty legit. Okay. Okay. Lots of uh, Chinese written on it. But actually, really nice foam wheel with a thumbstick. It weighs almost nothing. Uh, but it looks like we've got a couple buttons here to change maybe dual rates. And it looks like steering trim and throttle. That sounds promising. Oh, it was actually split apart a little bit. Did you see that? Huh. Still rattly. Okay, well, that... Uh, there's a screw missing. Okay. All right. Off to a great start. That's probably what's rattling around in there, huh? Great. No problem. I mean, it's got plenty of other screws. How, ma how many do you really need? And not strapped down at all inside the car is the Range Rover. Dang. Okay. That looks pretty, that looks pretty legit. Not gonna lie. Ooh, yes. Looking around this rig, it looks like we have friction shocks. This one's broken. Oh, both of the ones in the back are broken. Looks like they're just popped off though. We can probably can probably do something about that. Independent front suspension. And looks like some metal metal four link in the back. Uh, and this looks very, very much like a WPL. Very much like a double P WPL. Uh, the same it looks like the same drive line. The independent front suspension looks remarkably like what you would find on a WPL. Plastic drive shaft. I mean, it was cheap. What kind of battery do we have? It doesn't have a balance plug. Oh man, that means we have to charge it with this thing. It was at this point where everything really took a turn for the worse. I put batteries in the transmitter and discovered that it wouldn't turn on. I messed with the switch a bunch, but couldn't get it to do anything. I figured I didn't have anything to lose at this point, so I took it apart. But not before I fought the transmitter to get the batteries back out of the dang thing. There we go. There's one. There's two. Okay. Wow. I found that the switch was installed upside down. So on was off and off was on. I switched the switch around and fiddled with the wires and got it to actually turn on and I found a broken piece of plastic that was causing the rattle inside. Yeah, that's broken. I don't know what that's from, but, but that's broken all right. Maybe the switch is just upside down. I replaced the two missing screws, and while I was at it, I took the body off the chassis, got the shock snapped back into place, and gave everything a once-over. And I noticed lots of similarities between the Range Rover and the WPL trucks. So that's the first bit of good news. That means replacement parts as well as upgrades should be available, but let's be real for a moment. If you were, if you got this for your kid, if you got this for, you know, someone young who was new to the hobby, uh, this is not a good experience. You know, having things just not work out of the box, uh, you know, broken bits, uh, you know, I have disassembled the car and the transmitter, neither one of which are really meant to be disassembled. 
uh, just to get it to just to, just to get it here where we're ready to put a battery in it and go play with the thing. You know, if I were if I were a parent and I got this for my kid and I was not a hobbyist, I'd be pretty disappointed. Uh, but you know, at the same time, it was sixty six dollars. And now that I've had some time to really look at it and think about it, uh, I have some thoughts. Okay, let's just. The body isn't perfect. There's a big old chip taken out of it right here. The suspension just I mean it it doesn't it doesn't really work. The springs are the springs are much too soft and there's not really any suspension in the back. The front, I've got it better uh just adjusting the torsion bars in the front, but it's still not great. The wheels, I don't like them. Uh I'm normally all about steel wheels. I think steel wheels are cool, you know. Um, and they're definitely starting to make a comeback, uh, but chrome steel wheels on a Range Rover just, it, it just doesn't look right. The tires are much too aggressive for this body. It looks like, it looks like they're going to rub. It, it really does. Uh, the molded plastic interior looks really cool. It looks awesome. Uh, and if you are a tinkerer, you could go in there and really, really add some detail the lights i haven't fired it up yet but i i think that's gonna look really cool you know the soft mirrors inspire a little bit of confidence like you're not gonna go rip them right off but i just had to stop and just mention i've never really had something this disappointing before i've even run it especially if you are new to the hobby especially if you're thinking of getting this for someone maybe younger who is brand new to the hobby um if you're a tinkerer like me, if you have, you know, if you, if, if nothing here is intimidating to you at all, uh, and you just love the scale look of this thing, yeah, for sure. Yeah, go for it. 66 bucks is, is nothing. But anything outside of that, yikes. Okay, are we ready to see how this thing actually performs? <laughs> more, maybe more for the comedy of it than anything else. I'm excited. To, maybe it'll be awesome. Maybe it'll be awesome. Maybe it'll be awesome. So what do we think of the Range Rover? Well, just as I thought, the tires get stuck on the wheel arches and uh, it's not doing it now, but every once in a while, it will, the tire will just rub. Yeah, see like right there. Over anything like sticks, you know, it gets stuck pretty often. Even like the smallest terrain, it gets stuck. It just doesn't have the torque to get through stuff. That being said, it is pretty quick. Oh. Like it, it is, it is pretty quick. The, the top speed is is not bad, but you know, for crawling over stuff like this, yeah. And see now, it just doesn't have the torque to get out of it. It does have high and low rates. It's not like a gearbox. It doesn't have high and low gears, but it has like a high and low speed. Uh, but for crawling, it doesn't really do much. But as far as looks go, I mean, it does look epic. Not super duper scale while you're driving, but. I mean, come on, it's a Range Rover out here doing Range Rover stuff. Love it. Overall, I would say the performance matches the price tag. You know, you're not gonna come out here with your big 10 scale crawlers and be doing this stuff, but if you're just playing around in the backyard, I'd say its abilities are adequate. Oh, stuck again. There we go, get it, get it, get it. The suspension travel isn't great. It's pretty bouncy and it bottoms out a lot. You can hear the, the chassis going dunk, dunk, dunk as it kind of bounces along. So, you know, but for only having, you know, a half inch of suspension travel, yeah, I've definitely seen worse. Believe it or not, I did have fun driving this thing. I was reminded of the old saying, it's more fun to drive a slow car fast than a fast car slow. And that's kind of the same story here. When you drive something underpowered way out of its comfort zone, it's definitely a fun challenge, and I was thinking about all the ways that I can improve it. Plus, I wanted this little crawler for one reason, the way it looks. 
there aren't a lot of Range Rovers in the RC world. Defenders, sure, but not the Range Rovers. And I've always liked the way these big luxury SUVs looked covered in dirt and mud. And for the price, it makes for some carefree backyard or even indoor crawling. Don't get me wrong, there's way better options out there, but what it lacks in capabilities, it makes up for in looks. So anyway, that is the LDR slash C 14th scale Range Rover. Did I get scammed? Well, I mean, you do kind of get what you pay for. It would be nice if it just worked out of the box and I didn't have to take it apart instantly and kind of fix things. And the more I drive it, the more I actually do really like this transmitter. It's super lightweight The and it feels really nice in the hand. It's easy to control. The button layout is pretty legit. I like that it has lights for everything to tell you what's on and what's off. But the super soft bouncy suspension in the rear, the locked differential in the rear, and the independent front suspension makes me wonder, would this thing be good at drifting? Anyway, thank you so much for watching, guys. If you're interested in this, I'm going to leave it in the link below so you can get scammed too. And if you pick one up or if you have already got one, let me know what your experience has been. Did yours work out of the box or did I just get a lemon? What do you think about turning this lemon into lemonade? Should we upgrade it? Anyway, that's going to do it for this one, guys. If this is your first time checking out the channel, welcome. I'm glad you found it. I like to do RC shenanigans like this all the time. I've got some wicked stuff coming up. You're going to want to stick around. All right, guys, until next time. Chopping Toyotas out here. Chopping them. All right, what do we think about this hill climb here? It's a steep one. Are we going to do it? Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. No way. No way. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I see you, Range Rover.